In this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to install the Pinterest plugin and how easy it is to use. So we're in a dashboard of a demo blog that I have set up. We're going to go to the plugins menu and select add new. And then we're going to use the upload feature. Browse our computer for the zip file that will be supplied and click install now. Okay, tells us it's successfully installed. We'll click the activate button. And that is the installation done. There really is nothing more to it than that. If you now go to your settings menu, you will find you have a WP Pinterest settings page. And we've made this really as easy as it can be to follow. Everything you need to know about the short codes this is going to give you is explained here. So all the instructions are right within the plugin. So you don't have to worry if you forget how to use it. You don't have to worry about digging around and finding a PDF document. Just go into the settings and there's a reminder of all the different things that you can make this do. But in all honesty, once you've used it once, you're not going to need to worry again. There are two default settings we can set here. Uh, the first one is our... Uh, Pinterest username and the other one is a default uh, image URL uh, that you can specify so that if when you do a pinned link you don't specify an image that's the default one it will use which would be preferable to using the default one that Pinterest gives you. Uh, if you leave that blank and you don't specify an image URL when you do a link then it will use the Pinterest default one. So you're covered no matter what. If you don't fill these in, the plugin still works. Uh, so I'm just going to pop in a link to an existing image. Click Save Changes. So it tells me my settings are saved, and that's it. I'm ready to go. I now have two new short codes I can use in a post. I have one called Pin Follow and one called Pin It. And I'm going to go into a post now. I'm just going to load an existing post and I'll show you exactly how this works. So let's uh, just edit a post. So these are all scheduled. Let's find one that's already. I'll we'll just do one and then move it to published. Let's just set it for today's date. Oops. Just March the 1st today. So that should publish right away in a second. Okay, here's my blog post, and anywhere in the post that I want to add my pin it button, I do it like this. Say I, if I wanted to put a follow button, then I can just put pin follow in square brackets. And by default, that will use the username that we put in the settings page, and it will use the medium-sized Pinterest button. There are... Uh, four different buttons that Pinterest gives you a small one a medium one a large one and what we call the follow button the follow one actually has the wording follow me on Pinterest and it's, it's like a bigger button by default this will use the medium sized button let's say you wanted to use uh, a different button we can put button equals and then in between single quotes we can put the word small that will use the small Pinterest button. Large, we'll use the large one. Medium, we'll use the same basically as not specifying it at all. And the other one is the follow button, which will do the larger format. Now what happens if you want to give a link to uh, an alternative Pinterest account? Uh, it's quite possible if you're like me, you're gonna to want to have more than one account. Uh, I won't get in this video, I'm not going to go into the legalities of that and whether it's against our terms of service, but let's face it, as marketers we've probably all got multiple Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts and so on. Uh, so if you want to use a, a username on Pinterest that isn't the one specified in your default, then in here you can just add user equals, and then again between single quotes, put the username on Pinterest of the user that you want to create a follow button for. So that is the pin follow button explained. That's it really. There's no other settings for that. 
you can, and as I say, if you don't specify the button, it will use the medium size one. If you don't specify user, it will use the uh, user that you have in your setting screen. The other button you have is called a pin it button. And the pin it button will create a text link, uh, which will pin any page specified. Now, if you use pin it like that with no parameters, then it will use your uh, website address. So in whatever website you've installed your blog on, and it will use the default image as specified in the settings. Unless you haven't specified one, then it will use the default image from Pinterest. And you can optionally add a counter uh, on there as well. And there's an optional description. So you can just use that. You can also specify any or all of the following. A URL, which will be the uh, page that you want to create the pin it link for. Uh, let's put in one of my sites there. Then we can specify a uh, counter if we want one. By default, there will not be one. There are two types of counter in Pinterest at the moment. One is called horizontal, one is called vertical. You can put either the word vertical for the vertical one or V-E-R-T, either will work. And for the horizontal one, you can put the full word, which is what Pinterest specify, or you can put in, uh, or basically any abbreviation that states, starts HOR will work. And you can also specify none, which is the default. Uh, you can also specify a different image if you don't want to use the one in the, um, that's in your settings. And this would be a URL, so it would start with the HTTP, uh, mysite.com slash images, myimage.jpg. And you can use GIF, JPEG, PNG with uh, Pinterest. And the final optional setting is called description. And you can put a simple text description which will get passed along automatically to Pinterest to save the user typing anything in. It could just be something like, check this site out. Okay, as with the uh, pin follow button, you can use any or all or none of these. So you, you don't need, and you don't have to do it in that order either. You can put these in, in any order. Uh, so if you wanted just the default URL, you could have left that out. It wouldn't make any difference if you put that in there. You get the idea. So any order, it doesn't matter. And that's it. That is how you add uh, a button. So if we, in this case, let's just do a pin follow button. We use the... Um, button type follow. And let's save that and go and see what it looks like. Publish. And if I view the post. And there's my Pinterest follow button there. And that is it. That is how you use the Pinterest plugin for WordPress. Uh, very, very easy to use. And remember, if you get stuck at any point, you've only got to go back to the plugins menu or to the settings menu, go down to your settings page, and there is a full breakdown of everything I've just explained. Uh, there really is. This really does simplify it. There's no need to construct complicated links and put them in. The plugin handles it all for you. Uh, that's it. That's the plugin. That's how to install it. That's how to use it. That's how easy it is. Pinterest is gaining huge momentum right now. Uh, use this. You're going to get a lot of traffic out of Pinterest. I already am on many of my blogs.